this it's panel uh, is, um, as you can tell, we have a full uh, stage here, and we also have people online joining us from uh, uh, overseas, uh, I believe in Ukraine. Um, the panel right now is on advocacy, and um, for those of you who wonder what is the difference between lobbying and what is the difference between that and advocacy, we're, going, we're here to discuss that. The panel will explore the intricacies of advocacy and the art of running an, an effective uh, advocacy campaign, and I do believe that's a, a correct way of describing it. Hi, my name is Jim McBride. I'm on the communications team of the American Coalition for Ukraine. I'm also on the outreach committee, which is similar, but not, not a different thing. Um, it's more of a grassroots um, uh, task force. Um, I uh, also have about three decades in communications and politics, and so uh, uh, I hope to provide some of my background today and, and how, it, how it can work for you. Uh, hello, my name is Alias Vyaklovich. I'm representing Belarus. Uh, in particular, I'm an economic advisor of uh, Svetlana Tsikhanovska, the national leader of the Democratic Belarus, and also vice president of the Association of Belarusian Business Abroad. And uh, this is something I can share with you, our experience, how to build uh, a business community abroad. And good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Prince Taylor. I am here representing my own interests as a, as a U.S. veteran. Uh, I have helped create grassroots organizations or, or um, programs to support veterans, and so I'm here to help share more information about that. Hello, everybody. My name is Olga Schmidt. I'm the president of the Creative Society. That is what we're representing. Our main focus is climate crisis that's going on in the world today and the environmental degradation that we see. So that is what we'll be discussing. Hello, my name is Marina. I am the president of Alatra International Public Movement. We have been uh, studying the changes that are occurring on our planet for more than 27 years. Like we were able to detect anomalies in all layers of our planet, starting from their upper layer of atmosphere and going very, very deeply inside the inner core. And uh, definitely during this time, we were looking for a solution. What can be done? How we can mitigate? How we can really find something that will protect our Earth, give the beautiful future? And yes, we. Um, working at that field. We are testing different um, tools, how we can spread this information, how we can really like share and mobilize civil society that people understand the threat, they understand the idea, they understand the solution, and will act accordingly in order to bring these solutions to life. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is John Haidt. I have a deep background in psychology, uh, organizational change, conflict resolution, and I focus uh, my consultation uh, working with a range of uh, clients and, and organizations. Um, I have a particular focus in the Middle East uh, and a particular interest and background in, in the Middle East and Israel um, as it relates to the Middle East. So my focus really is looking at the psychological aspects and underpinnings that drive uh, many of the efforts that you all are, are working so diligently on. And um, I'm glad to be here. Thanks. And we're glad to have all of you here. And we're also very glad to have with us joining us from Ukraine, uh, Vitaly Herasak. I believe I pronounced that right. And if you could give us a quick breakdown of um, what you're doing and uh, you know what what when, uh, your experience. Yeah. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Da. Доброго дня, шановні колеги та гості конференції. Good afternoon, and guests of the Evapa Conference. My name is Vitaly Gersak. I am a member of the Ukraine 
и я заслуженный комгоматской организации Вильни Таверни. My name is Vitaly Yursak. I am a volunteer uh, at the forefront and also the founder of the NGO Free and Faithful. Моя місія полягає у підтримці та розвитку ініціатив, які сприяють благополуччю та інтеграції ветеранів війни в Україні. My mission is to support and develop initiatives that promote well-being and integration of war veterans in Ukraine. Громадську організацію «Вільні та вірні» було створено з метою надання голосу саме тим, хто захищає нашу країну. Free and Faithful was created to give a voice to the, those who defend our country. Ми також працюємо над тим, щоб наші ветерани мали всі необхідні ресурси для повноцінного життя після повернення з фронту цивільне життя. We are also working to ensure that our veterans have all the resources they need to lead a full life after returning from the front. Однією з наших ключових ініціатив стала організація міжнародної конференції «Дієва ветеранська політика» в Україні. One of our key initiatives was the organization of the International Conference Effective Veteran Policy in Ukraine, International Experience and Action Plan. Міжнародний досвід та план дій на цій конференції. Ми під час конференції зібрали 55 експертів з семи країн світу, в тому числі України, США та Європи. At this conference we brought together 55 experts from seven countries including Ukraine, the US and Europe. А також представники влади, політиків, військових та громадських, щоб поговорити, обговорити та розробити ефективні стратегії підтримки наших ветеранів. We also invited government officials, politicians, military personnel and civil society to discuss and develop effective strategies to support the veterans. Після проведення даної конференції ми створили робочу групу, яка вже працює над планом дій адаптації американського досвіду до українських умов. After the conference, we have established a working group that is already working on an action plan to adapt the American experience to Ukrainian realities. Також ми хочемо підготувати аналітичний звіт для Конгресу США. We are also preparing an analytical report for the U.S. Congress. Ці документи будуть представлені на наступній конференції в квітні місяці, після чого ми плануємо обговорити їх з ключовими зацікавленими особами в США та Україні. These documents will be presented at the next conference in April, after which we plan to discuss them with key stakeholders in the U.S. and Ukraine. Спілкування з американськими експертами підкреслило важливість змін в законодавстві України. Communication with American experts emphasized the importance of changes in Ukrainian legislation. Що стосується ветеранів війни, а також необхідність досконалення стратегій і практик їх реабілітації та адаптації. Legislation relating to war veterans as well as the need to improve strategies and practices for their rehabilitation and adaptation. Для нас особливо було почути цінним про досвід США, де існують спеціальні програми підтримки для жінок ветеранів, що можуть бути адаптовані для використання в Україні. It was especially valuable to hear about the experience of the United States where there are special support programs for women veterans that can be adapted for use in Ukraine. І на останок хочу підкреслити, що наша організація Вільні та Вірні активно and finally, I want to emphasize that our organization will actively lobby for those issues. Ми обов'язково будемо робити це з міжнародними нашими колегами, спираючись на їхній цінний досвід та підтримку. We will do this in close cooperation with our international colleagues, relying on their valuable experience and support. Ми віримо і надіємося в те, що спільними зусиллями ми зможемо досягти значних змін та покращити життя наших ветеранів в Україні. We believe that together we can achieve significant changes and improve the lives of veterans in Ukraine. Я дуже вам всім дякую 
за активну участь та підтримку нашої місії в Україні. Я дуже дякую нашим колегам та партнерам Сполучених Штатів Америки і бажаю вам хорошої спілкування і хорошої конференції, тому що це дуже важливо. I want to thank you all for active participation and support of our mission. Especially, I want to uh, express my gratitude to American partners, and I wish you a great and fruitful conference today. Всім вам хорошого настрою і всього найкращого. Дякую. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to throw this question to everybody on our panel, but I'm going to ask a different response from everybody regarding the question. Um, and also, of course, as usual, since we have a lot of people to give comments on and we have a lot of people interested in hearing what you have to say, if we could keep it brief. Um, quickly, the, the question, the first part of the question um, is what makes advocacy different from general government relations work uh, or classic lobbying? Um, thinking of a campaign, um, if you could tell me in what ways have you seen advocacy evolve um, yeah, since it was keeping the campaign that you that you've run in the past, how has advocacy evolved uh, to where it is today? Well, uh, from my exp experience with the um, American Coalition for Ukraine, um, we were really trying to build a uh, grassroots approach to advocacy. We um, we have a uh, action summit um, twice a year um, in Washington D.C. Of course. Uh, and um, where we encourage average Americans, uh, a lot of Ukrainian Americans, but also people who care about defense and national security and things like that, to come to Washington from all over the country, from many, you know, almost not every state, but almost all the states, um, to lobby their legislators, um, to you know, sit in a meeting with staff and um, encourage the the. Uh, their member of Congress to support several pieces of legislation relating to Ukraine. Um, and what we're trying to do is, uh, is bring in a wider network of folks that we have not reached yet because a lot of people don't know how to get, get involved. So we're building a, a social media network around the country uh, to build relationships beyond the ones that we have you know, already flocked to us. Uh, and that includes, um, well, one thing we've done is uh, we had an outreach opportunity recently where we um, participated, we had a table at the um, Principles First Summit, which was kind of the opposite of CPAC. It's for people who might have a Republican background who um, um, do not support the agenda um, <laughs> of, uh, of President Trump. Um, so uh, we were very successful at, there was a very pro-Ukraine, Reagan-esque, Republican uh, constituency there and we got uh, a lot of sign-ups and th these folks should be great advocates for us and so the, that is the kind of work that we're doing uh, to uh, to reach out to uh, the average Americans and, and get them involved. So. Great, now we're going to move to the other side of our panel here and again uh, keeping in mind uh, a successful advocacy campaign how it was different than what you may do in a typical government relations campaign um, but with this twist on it, um, can you uh, tell me uh, a, a, a set of tools that you may use in an advocacy campaign that wouldn't really fit into a general lobbying campaign? Uh, before our last panel, I would definitely uh, emphasize TikTok and all other social media, but right now, like, our world is changing so fast, so you never know. But for advocacy, it's definitely so. Our goal is to really mobilize people around us, right? And the biggest difference from the commercial lobbying is that we are not having um, a lot of like financial like resources. So most of the people are like on, on all the activities are self-funded and um, driven by the desire of the participants to really implement that activity. That's why, so we definitely use, we need to really think about like our action and we really need to like really calculate what bring us from A to B, the fastest and the low cost way. So definitely social media. 
is the fastest way right now. And, and definitely keeping that low cost is, is, is yeah. key for a lot of different campaigns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Same question here. Oh, I'll hand, you can take that mic, I guess. I'm going to take um, this mic. There we are. The, uh, 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 an advocacy campaign, um, but thinking of it, how did you navigate the intersectionality of various social justice issues uh, within an advocacy campaign, ensuring inclusivity and representation? Oh, wow. Okay, so this is on. Um, that's a difficult question because I, I think that initially you're just trying to do something to advocate. And a lot of the people that you're trying to reach in minoritized populations don't know that these um, advocacy programs are also for them. And so you have to do a lot of extra work to um, make sure that you're reaching African Americans, Latinos, um, Asian Americans, and any other um, population that you really want to reach. But I, I want to piggyback on what the, the two people right before me said. I think it's important to use grassroots. I think that you have a lot more um, gravitas and a lot more credibility when it's something that starts grassroots. I also think that part of that is not just social media, which is amazing and we have to use it, but the power of volunteers. There are a lot of other folks out there that want to support you and they don't know that you're doing something wonderful. So it's kind of incumbent upon you as an advocate to let them know because with lobbying that's more political, the advocacy, you can do very much at the grassroots level. And the way that I've done that, and I'm gonna to try to be quick because we have a lot of great people up here and I wanna hear from you as well. Um, my, my issue ended up being loneliness and social isolation because we realized during the pandemic and it existed well before the pandemic, no one was paying attention because we all get lonely. But we have a lot of veterans, especially and caregivers, that get chronically lonely. And we started reaching out to them and we realized that addressing some of those issues early on prevented clinical issues like depression and suicidal ideations and things of that nature, which I think, especially with what Ukraine is going through right now, you have to be very cognizant of moving forward. Same question again, successful campaign, but if you could include also um, the creative society aspect of it, how, how, how did you work that in and did you find it uh, to be a useful tool? Mm-hmm. Thank you. So Creative Society is a volunteer project that's been, um, it's been around for over, well, we've been doing research for over 27 years, scientific research, and we have volunteers. So all people are volunteers from over 180 countries. And as uh, we were talking about inclusivity, uh, 180 countries, we have millions of volunteers from all over the world. So today from doing the research, we understand that we have problems with the core of our planet. And here comes the question of, we understand that there's anthropogenic factor, uh, that climate is changing, but also that there is another problem. There is something going on with the core of our planet. So um, in terms of advocacy, we're saying that we need a unified scientific center where we can unite all the scientists together around one table and work on this problem all together where they can solve not only the climate crisis issue that's going on in the world and will affect everyone soon, but also the environmental problem which is the pollution of the ocean, and we talked about microplastic with some of you. We know how big uh, this problem is, and we also look at this. We study what we can do, how we can clean up the oceans. So this all needs to, we can see that today, it's all coming from people themselves, from volunteers, sharing it on social media. We do social media campaigns as well as forums. We host forums in over 150 languages, which is incredible, all done by volunteers. Um, there's one global crisis, the responsibility was the last forum that we've done where we show all the scientific research and so on. So advocacy is important. It's important to speak out even on issues that you care about on social media through volunteers, talking to your neighbors and so on. So. Great. And <clears throat> I'm going to throw this to the both of you and whoever wants to take it grab it first, um, but uh, same thing, a successful social uh, uh, advocacy campaign, uh, but with this twist on it, uh, with 
how did you utilize and to what success uh, digital information services, social media? Uh, if either one of you wants to take it, if you have a prime example on how you use those to uh, successful means. I'm going to defer to these amazing people in a minute, but what I can say is um, when I talk with some clients about this very issue, right, do you think about communication? And that depends on, of course, on language, right? So as, as a, someone, you know, I was a psychologist, and that's how I look at communication. And I think, right, social media, one of the things that is so powerful is the communication is concise, it's personalized, and it's widely accessible. I think a lot of times, especially with um, different types of advocacy, I think one of the challenges that they run into is using language that's not accessible and that people can't relate to. And this is such a critical, critical thing because obviously, like none of the things going on with the earth started yesterday, but there's a certain, I think, anxiety that people have, and the way that I'm sure you go about phrasing things, right? That can either get people on board or move them away further into some denialism or, or other types of things. So I think approaching it, you know, from the psychological standpoint of figuring out where people are at, what their mood is on a particular issue, and then how to make a highly personal, really brief appeal is, is so powerful. But I turn it over to you who are actually doing it right now. Well, next. Oh. All right. I will try to answer both of your questions. One regarding the uh, advocacy, how do I understand it? I'm not an expert, but I guess that there are certain definitions regarding both lobbyism and uh, advocacy. In my very simple understanding, uh, lobbyism is more commercial. It is dedicated to, uh, to organizations who already uh, have certain capacity, financial capacity, organizational capacity. Uh, advocacy is softer, and advocacy, uh, I agree with you that advocacy uh, can, can be joined by, by massive, by, by in the mass, but by many people, including volunteers, why not? Uh, and, um, but advocacy is also um, not only on behalf of your organization, but sometimes also uh, on behalf of wider society. And, um, the, the case of my organization, it's uh, Association of Belarusian Business Abroad. This is the only so far business association of Belarusian business in exile in abroad, because as uh, some of you might know, uh, three and a half years ago in Belarus, uh, there was uh, almost a revolution, and uh, which was uh, the, the presidential elections were uh, um, rigged, and uh, our political leader, Svetlana Tikhonovska, was forced to to run out of the country, and half a million of Belarusians uh, run out of the country over three and a half years ago, uh, over the past three and a half years ago, some of them businessmen. So we established two and a half years ago, established such business association where only business units can join this association. So far we have 112 uh, business members in 11 countries, including the US, Canada, and nine EU uh, countries. Uh, we use, this is my second, um, my answer to the second question, we use definitely uh, digital um, tools in order to communicate with each other. So we have uh, chat in Telegram, uh, we have uh, email list, uh, we have uh, webinars, um, we have some, um, yeah, when we have annual uh, meetings of our members, obviously we do it in, uh, in a hybrid mode. Uh, so we use uh, definitely uh, social media. Uh, as an association of Belarusian business, so the the country to, which is which has very uh, negative image today, Belarus, it's co-aggressor uh, to the war in Ukraine, a Russian war in Ukraine. Uh, so uh, we also our mission and then our advocacy campaign should uh, include also positive uh, image and positive statement and distinction between the regime of Lukashenko, which is an evil and is uh, responsible for the war as well as Russia, but uh, to, to distinct it from. The Belarusian society, 
uh, which is against this war and against uh, both regimes of Putin and Lukashenko. So we use social media to create this positive uh, narrative uh, to show uh, that uh, you can be proud to be honest Belarusian business uh, and uh, only as an association, only as a group, uh, we can defend our rights, we can, um, um, we can advocate on behalf of our association, but also wider on behalf of our uh, Belarusian diaspora in abroad. Great, thank you very much. Um, I, I just wanted to highlight something that was said, and uh, we'll, I'll, I'll throw it out there for everybody to, to kind of uh, respond to. But there was the there was a thing that was said that you know a, a good advocacy campaign will make this something people feel personally tied to, that they have a stake in it. <clears throat> and we have two people here with us, one in Ukraine, John, who's done a lot of uh, advocacy work on behalf of uh, Israel. They are in situations that it's not only personally people feel a stake in, people are personally dying. And I think that's a unique aspect of advocacy when you have people who are being put not just in harm's way because of a regulation or a law or health care needs, but they're actually being killed and shot and families are being destroyed. And I'd like to thank them for their, uh, their hard work. Um, and Vitaly, thank you very much if you're still with us. Um, you know, you're, you're in a tough spot and I think it's a, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's a difficult position when you're so close to the issue, and um, you're doing a fantastic job, and we'd like to you know, thank you personally for it. And John, of course, I'm sure you have lots of stories of people who are uh, hurting now um, because of the ongoing conflict um, on, on, on both sides, uh, you know, and it's, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult thing. Um, and I just wanted to kind of, I'll segue, and then I'll just give a closing to, for all of you to go back around again and highlight since we are discussing advocacy, it's due that you guys get to highlight the programs that you're advocating for. But, um, and I'll throw myself out there as the, maybe I'm the evil advocate. Um, it was said that a lot of times advocacy highlights the positive. Um, having done a lot of advocacy work targeting uh, elected officials, um, I've often used what I like to call uh, the carrot and the stick. If we have a member of a, a legislative body who isn't supporting my client's uh, bill or philosophy, we offer the, uh, uh, the stick, which is we will start beating them about the head, <laughs> call, you know, calling them into question in front of their constituents, uh, especially in an election year, uh, have, for having been on the wrong side of something. And the carrot we offer them is we will stop beating you about the head and do some nice things for you on social media as saying, this person came to see the light, thank you, you know, you're doing a great job for the people that elected you. Um, and so I think there, there's, there's two aspects of that. There's the often positive thing, and uh, another example I'll throw out there is a, a gentleman I went to college with and played rugby with. He started uh, an association called Power to the Patients. Um, I wish I was involved in it because it's a fantastic organization and he's got some fantastic advocacy things that are going on, and his thing is um, somewhat of shaming members of Congress. Uh, recently, if any of you live in D.C., um, he hosted an event with the, uh, the rock group Foo Fighters at the Anthem. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, thankfully, I know him, so I got a VIP pass, and it was fantastic, and we got to meet the groups and everything else. Um, like I said, I wish I had those type of you know, campaigns that I was involved with, because I'd like to do more things with rock groups like that, but um, it, it's, it was, you know, it, it, it's used to bring in people in large groups like that who see themselves as uh, supporters or moved by these musicians or these creative people, um, and they're put opposite of, we're glad you're here today, we're glad your heroes are, are here supporting us, now tell the bad congressman to get on the right side of this and, and support our thing. So there, there's a lot of levels to advocacy, I guess, is what we're saying today here. Um, highlighting, making it more personable, telling a story that people can resonate with them on a, on a personal basis. Um, and that's, you know, a lot of times that's advertising. I was shown a, an ad, um, 
it was an old, for everybody here who knows what Legos are, um, it was an old Lego ad of a kid holding up some type of Lego monstrosity that they had just put together from random, and the smile on the child's face was just beaming. Um, very simple, kind of oldly type of uh, uh, advertising, and it was like, you know, you know they've done something special just by the look on their face. So there's that type of thing that kind of resonates with people on a general personal basis, and then I think we also have, um, whether some people here may not want to admit it, they've also used the carrot and the stick approach, and then there's also the aspect of, you know, shaming people of, this, you know, shame on you for being on the wrong side of this. Um, uh, personally, I just wrote an article that went after shaming uh, Senator T uh, Tuberville for his no-win scenario type of thing, uh, especially on the, the anniversary of the Miracle on Ice. Uh, 1980 U.S. hockey team beat the Soviet team where nobody thought they had a chance to win, and they come out of nowhere and won that game. Um, shame on him for doing that and saying the things he did about the Ukraine. But I'll just close off everybody, give you a chance again, mention who you are and the, and the group that you are advocating for. Um, well, yeah, my, my name is Jim McBride and uh, I'm with the American Coalition for Ukraine. And one thing I, I did want to get people thinking about, because it's actually very rarely discussed um, these days, uh, but it should be, is um, the importance of community engagement internally um, creating platforms where the, the community can um, uh, motivate each other and educate each other on a daily basis um, to, um, to, to encourage each other to keep advocating because uh, one thing that you know was, was actually needed in advocacy is um, for uh, grassroots advocates to be consistent and reaching out to member, their members of Congress as much as every weekday, um, because every day their tally starts at zero again and they count all the calls that come in. So we use Signal and we're trying to move to Slack because it's a little bit better for community management. But I definitely recommend that once you have a supporter network, try to encourage them to get into smaller communities where you can engage them on a regular basis um, and uh, you know, try to keep the engagement going um, because um, I mean, we have a very motivated community, so we have a little bit of an advantage putting that together. But nonetheless, um, I think it's it's a good way to um, maximize the potential of your network. Council, real quick, I just oh, sorry, I need to make a, a quick correction on my part. I missed somebody who is online with us right now. I'd like to introduce him and throw it over to him to give us some remarks on. The group he's at, he advocates for, and maybe some uh, highlights of uh, things that he's done to um, have successful campaigns. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Joshua Bergen. Uh, he serves as the director of the New Security Leaders Program at the Warsaw Security Forum, uh, and is an advisor to the European Academy of Diplomacy. Uh, for over three decades, um, he's balanced a professional interest in domestic U.S. politics and international affairs, focusing on Central and Eastern Europe. And I'd like to thank him, and uh, if he could give us a quick breakdown of his experience in, in advocacy work, uh, whether it's in Europe or whether it was in the United States. Douglas, thank you for the introduction. Um, and it's an honor to be with all of you today. Literally, for sake of time, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about my past, other than to say I've been in campaign politics since I was 15, for three decades. And I wanted to reinforce two things that were stated today. Um, <clears throat> Jonathan, I think you had commented about, uh, about sort of the psychological aspects, and Douglas, you've talked about story. Story is incredibly powerful and important when engaging with advocacy campaigns. As you pointed out, both Ukraine and Israel have amazing stories to tell, often very sad. Unfortunately, from my space, where I sit as the keen observer of Russia, Central Asia, Central Eastern Europe, I often see battle scenes, I see destruction, I don't see much that moves the heartstrings. I haven't seen any video or any advocacy videos yet where a child is crying and saying, I miss my daddy. And these things are incredibly powerful. Story moves people. Um, look to the work of Marshall Gantz, who, who plays through the very the incredible power of story, and certainly Jonathan Haidt on Moral Foundations. Each of these are, are, are key tools to motivating constituencies to move on your behalf, and then use the traditional tools of campaign um, to organize and take that message then to elected officials wherever they may be. 
on that point, I'll turn it back to you again. I'm recognizing we're very short on time for this panel, but thank you. No, thank you. And I'm sorry I didn't get to you earlier on when I'm being online. All good. So I'll throw it back here uh, quickly and just a quick rundown again, um, your organization and uh, maybe some closing remarks. Uh, sure. Uh, I just acknowledge from Association of Lawyers in Business Abroad. And I think that in order to use stick and carrots, uh, especially sticks, you need to have certain level of um, capacity. It's much easier to use uh, carrots, even if you don't have capacity. Uh, but uh, to use sticks, definitely, you, you, you need to have certain power. Otherwise, it's, um, it will not work. It will not threat anybody. Uh, it will not be serious, right? And uh, you will lose your credibility. Uh, our association is relatively young, two and a half years uh, ago we were established, so uh, we are trying to use mainly carrots so far. Yes, my name is uh, Dr. Prince Taylor. I am here in my personal capacity. Um, but I, I do want to say that uh, the, 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 the sort of area that I'm passionate about did not start that way. We were actually advocating for caregivers of veterans. And we thought that we were still doing it sort of in a virtual capacity, and we realized that we weren't. Uh, but there were other organizations that were advocating for caregivers better than we were. And so the area that we saw was the loneliness and social isolation thing. And even the U.S. Surgeon General is very passionate about loneliness. Um, and this is a global issue. Uh, I, I've heard about a lot of um, youth that 10, 15 years ago were happy. And then they got these phones and they got to see how other people their age were living in Dubai and all these other places and they, they weren't happy anymore. And so, um, and I, it is funny, but those things have real world consequences because they start dealing with, or they start creating mental health issues and psychological issues and things of that nature. And so if anything, I'm here sort of issuing a clarion call to say we have to stay on top of those things for our veterans, but it's not just veterans that get lonely. Hello, thank you. Uh, I'm Olga Schmidt from Creative Society, and we advocate, well, we've done a lot of research on climate change, why it's changing, and we understand, as I said, the anthropogenic factor, but also we can see that something is going on inside of our planet, within the core of our planet, and then the core is warming up from the within, from the inside, and magma is rising, and it's causing all kinds of things on uh, the top layer of our, on Earth. Uh, we see the ocean that's warming up from the bottom up. We see the glaciers that are melting from below. We see, of course, because of our oceans uh, warming up, we see a lot of precipitation and landslides and so on and so forth in different regions of the world. So we understand that today, in order to study this issue, in order to study this problem, we need a, a unified scientific center that all scientists need to come together around one table and actually start studying this uh, this issue, this global problem. And it's a, it's a big project, but we understand that it needs to be done and it needs to be researched and studied and um, that is our, our main concern today. And yes, we uh, completely understand that the topic that we are dealing with is um, very, very difficult and sometimes even dangerous. Sometimes we, it feels like you're walking like, like mm -hmm. really, really thin ice mm -hmm. because this agenda is very, very, very polarized, very, uh, it's, it's not easy, let's put it like that. But coming back to your quote, so we definitely would not be sitting here without knowing that there is a solution. Yes, of course, and we definitely would like to share with people that we still have time. We still, we understand the nature of these catastrophes. We understand why it's right now escalating and what are the steps that we need to start taking in order to save us. And definitely when we um, introduce this information to the people. How you said that, absolutely correctly, that people react differently. We're all different. 
but by the end of the day, we all human beings, we all have families, and we really would like for everybody to live happily. And we never ask people to believe us. We give information and say, like, here is the source. So because all the information, all the graphs, all the data that we operate, we take from reliable sources, from famous institution. So, and we give the sources and ask people, don't believe us. Take the report and prove it. And after you check all the information and basically adding two plus two, you will receive four, we hope. <laughs> and then you will join and then you will act because there is no other way because we all want to leave and we all want to see our kids to grow up. I, I agree with that 100%. Um, I know nothing about polarization, so I can't speak to that. Um, actually, almost entirely what I know is polarization, right? Um, and I look at it, you know, again, through like a psychological lens. Uh, I'm Dr. John Haidt and I consult independently. Um, so I take a look a lot about, you know, movements on the street. And I think we see throughout the Middle East, uh, particularly, right, starting in 2011 with the Arab Spring, that the voice of the street is really contradicted both in Israel and in many of, of the neighboring countries where the voice on the street is really asking for change and is organized for change. I think one of the things that I notice, and I notice this both in Israel and surrounding countries, is there's a real drive of discontent and a real surge on the street but there's no plan for a day after. And I think this affects many movements. Um, and again, I think that relates to communication and, and um, you know, galvanizing large, large groups in a highly organized way um, around a central theme that appeals to people. Uh, so that's something I'm quite interested in. And I'll uh, turn it back to you. Thank you very much. I think, you know, we. We tried to take this uh, this issue uh, uh, and this learning uh, time to uh, educate everybody with some great people who have a lot of knowledge on advocacy, and of course we just don't have the time to get out everything that these, this, these people all have in the way of experience. So I would urge you to look them all up on LinkedIn or contact the IGAPA.net and, and talk to them or SIC to find out how you can have a successful advocacy program and maybe some things you could pick up from our great list of, of panelists here tonight. Um, and uh, I'd like to just thank everybody for participating. And again, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Katarina and her groups for putting this on. So thank you, panel. Thank you. A little round of applause for them.